this new one. Just so everyone's aware. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Lauren, uh, working on all things growth at Three Box Labs, the team behind Ceramic. Um, today, we have a bunch of things to get through, so we'll just kind of dig or dive right into it. Um, to start, I'd love to pass it to Matthew to do just like a quick intro. He's the newest member of our Three Box team. Um, so I want him to have the floor for a second. Hi, nice to meet you all. I'm Matthew. Uh, I'm new to uh, Three Box and, and new at Ceramic here, just a couple of days in. But I'm super excited and, and ready to do all I can to help our community understand what we're doing here um, with Ceramic and to build out the content you guys need to adopt this thing faster and make it more resilient for your applications. Um, so feel free to use me as a point of contact. Um, throw your ideas at me if you'd like to see, you know, workshops, hackathons, anything like that. Um, we'd love your ideas. We'd also love your feedback. If you have the hard questions, you should ask somebody else for right now. But in a week, start asking me and uh, I'll do what I can to ask, answer all those hard questions for you. And um, hopefully we can build some really cool community stuff. So really excited to be here. Awesome. Thanks. Um, maybe to start, um, do we have Val? Yes, we do. Now, do you want to start? Um, I posted yesterday in our Ceramic Discord for people who saw some updates about Ceramic 2.0 that we're going to be releasing soon. Um, so also wanted to just chat about it here and maybe Val can give you a couple of minutes to just update everyone on what you've been working on. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, we're, we're getting pretty close to releasing uh, V2. Um, we've been testing on our dev network right now, dev unstable. Um, so we've been running V2 with uh, Go IPFS and Basically, the for node operators, um, one of the major kind of changes will be switching from running a JS IPFS node to a Go IPFS node. Um, so V2 will be compatible with version 11 or later. Um, and right now, we're writing a migration guide uh, for folks to to be able to do that safely, um, you know, without losing any data or corrupting it, um, and and upgrade to the next version. Um, so I guess just like callouts right now. Um, we are pretty close to like finishing uh, a blog post that will go out um, about the migration, but it'd be great to like, you know, get some feedback on that early, make sure it makes sense. And, and anyone who's currently running a node um, has an understanding of that. So if you want to volunteer yourself to take a look at that um, and help us improve it before we publish it, that'd be great. Um, and then the next thing is as we move version two to Clay, um, which should be happening very soon, uh, we want to make sure that we have some folks testing against that as well. So especially if you're currently running a node, um, it would be great to uh, try to get your current node tested against uh, our version two on Clay. Um, but also just in general, um, if you want to help with uh, testing V2 before we put it on a mainnet, um, yeah, definitely let us know. Uh, that'd be super helpful. Uh, anything I missed there? No, I think that was good. I'll just add that. I think we'll be sharing more details soon for partners that actually want to help us test on what we're looking for and how you can help. Um, and also just on uh, more documentation around migration and how um, partners who are currently running nodes can migrate and upgrade to V2. Um, and then the other thing I'll mention is we're aware there are some dependencies. So not everyone will want to upgrade right away. We'll share out like more details on that. And what we know, we're working on some solutions and workarounds internally. Um, to accelerate that. So just a heads up, I'll pause um, and open up to the community. Any questions on this or thoughts? Cool. If not, one other thing I'll also just mention now um, is that we're exploring some changes potentially with the ceramic gateway. Um, so this is just kind of a call to anyone here if you are using the gateway um, pretty significantly, please like reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to chat with you and just give you a heads up about what we're thinking and get your feedback. Um, so that's just kind of an open ask to anyone dialing in or listening to this. Um, and maybe next we can have, we'll have some community demos as well today, but I think I saw Hardik dial in. Um, I don't know, Joel, like maybe if you wanna just kind of frame up before Hardik presents the Cacao POC um, of like some of the work and where we're at um, or if Hardik wants to do that. Then we can just jump into a quick demo so people can see what we're working on. Yeah. Um, so this is some work we've been kind of it's been going on for quite some time. We've been kind of thinking about how to make the the way a user um, authorizes an application to uh, write to the user's data streams and their user's data 
in a better way that's like easier for the user to understand and, and uh, kind of gives the application like granular access rather than like having access to all of the user's data. And some of that research culminated in uh, something which is called Cacao. So Cacao is an object uh, capability model. And I'm not going to go too deep into like what that is or how that works. Uh, but essentially, you give the application an object that it can use to make updates on behalf of the user. And so we align this with another effort in kind of the Ethereum community that's called Signing with Ethereum, um, which is like this new effort in, in the Ethereum space, to like sign a message to sign into applications. And generally, that's used to sign into backends, but we actually can leverage that to sign into kind of peer to peer systems. Um, so signing with Ethereum is kind of the first. Uh, uh, authentication system you can use with Kakao. In the future, we'll add more blockchain supports uh, to Kakao as well. Um, just shortly out of how it works, and, and uh, Article is going to show the demo, but essentially the application generates a session key. Then the application asks like the user, hey, I want to get right access to this particular stream. And uh, this is for how long I want to get access and, and so on. And sends a signature request, a sign in with a Ethereum request to the wallet. The wallet signs that. It includes like the street, the ID of the stream, and you know some kind of like um, expiry date and some more metadata information. Um, and the the or the wallet, the user can simply send this message and basically give the um, application, you know, the authorization to write to the stream for uh, on their behalf for like you know a week or something like that um so yeah Hardik, do you want to dive into the demo yep um okay so everything joel just said but a little more visually um <laughs> so okay so the first step um i'm just going to connect wallet and we'll see what happens so connected to my metamask um i'm signed in with my ETH wallet here um so as he said the first thing we do we create a deterministic tal document and if you look closely um it is currently owned by my metamask address so my ETH wallet and this is the controller of that document um what we did in the background was we also generated a session key um for for this app um and currently, like there's nothing in the document. It's empty. It's a single um, commit ID, uh, tip ID actually. And what we can do, if we click authorized app. Um, this is the sign in with Ethereum message. Uh, so EIP four three six one, and the CV message um, will ask the user to sign it with MetaMask, and it specifies basically give this application access to some of your data on ceramic and specifically this stream right here uh, which is the document we created and we have an expiration time of about a week um, from today and so this capability will be valid for a week when i sign this in the background it's going to convert the cv into a cacao object uh sorry cacao capability um, and what i can do now is i can input whatever information i want here um, and the dap not not my metamask id not this did pkh here but the did key owned by the dap can now update this document on our behalf and this commit that is made uh, you see the document changed a little bit it didn't ask me for a signature on MetaMask. Um, we don't have a session key for me. Um, this DAP did key was directly able to update the document that is controlled by my address. And it can keep doing so up until the next week, until the capability expires. Um, so this is really cool just because we now have a way to let other people write and update streams owned by you um, and further down the line they can further delegate a subset of that capability to even more people and form an entire capability chain um, and obviously like if i if the dap was to try to do this without the capability um, and it's 
it's just going to fail. It's, it's not a valid uh, JWS that it signs. Um, but yeah, as long as it has the capability, you can update it however many times at once. Um, and this will work with any ETH wallet. So I showed you the demo with MetaMask right now, but this could very well, um, I could make this work with say Wallet Connect and any mobile wallet will work because it's just using uh, typical Ethereum personal signatures for the sign in with Ethereum message. And yeah, um, that's kind of the flow uh, for the proof of concept right now. Um, yeah, if there's any questions or thoughts, I'll open it up to you guys. All right. So, uh, so this UX is much better um, than sort of having the 3ID Connect iframe pop up. What are the what are the drawbacks to this um, model and like? how would one go about like linking two accounts together if we remove that step um, from like writing data? Yeah, so currently we don't support linking to blockchains other than Ethereum for Kakao. And we all, since we used it PKH, we also don't have, like this is a proof of concept, but currently we don't have um, a way to link two different blockchain accounts together. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you, if you're using cacao, the DID, if you're using this sort of new model in the proof of concept, the DID that you're using is going to be a did PKH, which is a key hash of your Ethereum wallet key. So that means that DID will be specifically tied to that one wallet. Um, and that means if you needed, if you wanted to change wallets, um, or you know, use a different blockchain or whatever, like as your authentication system, you would wind up with a totally independent DID. Um, so that is the real advantage of 3ID that we have today and 3ID Connect is that it enables linking multiple wallets to a single DID um, and then being able to, to up, add or remove or you know, change which wallet you're using for authentication over time. Um, this POC will be tied to a single wallet. So the next step after this POC is for us to start thinking about how to build this functionality into the, three, the existing 3ID system and 3ID Connect so that you can still have the advantages of this single DID um, that's tied to multiple accounts and evolves while maintaining the, the better UX um, and authentication and access control flow. Um, that's kind of why we're calling this a POC rather than like the full the full thing because um, it does come with this this trade off that you lose that sort of multi account identity piece. And yeah, I guess... okay, sorry, Joel, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so so I guess like I mean, uh, one approach could be to to like try to integrate this in like create connect directly, or it could be to like start using this a little bit and then figure out a way to like merge accounts into like new three IDs in the future. And so we yeah we're trying to figure out like the right approach to like making this compatible with 3ID. Um, so like we like because this provides such such a like to create a UX for users, it might be that like many people want to use this still, and many use cases might actually not want linking between accounts. Uh, uh, instead, of just like have an account that's associated with like specific Ethereum address. So definitely like think that you know, this is somewhat at the stage where like people can actually like start playing around and using it a little bit. Uh, the other thing I would say is uh, the, the PKH like this system doesn't support any type of like encryption right now. It's just like for public data. Uh, while 380 Connect support, does support encryption, uh, the drawback there is like your encryption key will live inside of like an iframe. And if that encryption key is stolen, then you know people would get access to like all of your encrypted data. Whereas here we make the trade off like, let us not have an encryption key that can be stolen. Um, and so there's no like data that can be lost here. There is like interesting things that can be explored using like maybe, maybe you can have like cacao as like an authentication system to have the protocols such as like lit protocol or um, threshold network. Uh, but yeah, that's still kind of like more in the idea phase. And in the permissions model, uh, Arctic, that you showed, basically like the MetaMask signature requested access to a specific stream. 
um, could, like let's say an app wants to get access to all the streams that are included in a user's instance of their data model. Is there like an easy way to do that? Because like you can imagine that there's like, I want my app to have the ability to like edit any of your blog posts and like edit your list of blog posts, which like are a ton of streams, right? Like, could you like consolidate that request into like a logical developer interface or does it have to be, you have to explicitly request every single stream? Yeah, so we added support for requesting capabilities over entire families of documents. Um, but I believe that is currently for the creation of new documents, still correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you can request the capability over like, I will modify everything related to this family and then the DAP can come along and create as many documents as it wants in that family on your behalf. Um, I yeah, so, yeah. So some additional context here. So family is a metadata property for tile documents in ceramic. And in, in, in like self ID and like with data models, when you create a record for a data model for a specific user, the family will be set to kind of the stream ID of the uh, data model. And this means that like all, all streams created inside of a data model will be uh, have that the family, which relates to like the data model or have a specific family for that data model. So what this means is you can request access to the family which corresponds to the data model. And then you can have, you know, you can create new streams inside of this data model. You can also modify the streams inside of this data model. Yeah. And that's that based on the assumption that we, that the family metadata property is applied equally to every stream in a data model that like, if you might want to identify streams that are further in like a nested structure, like layer one, layer two, or three, like would you use the tags property then for those? Like to, to like specify where in the data model it might live? Uh, I mean, that's the, inside of the data model, sure. Uh, the, the cacao doesn't like support specifying anything else than family right now. Um, but the tags are kind of more like a way to distinguish between streams inside of a family. Got it. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Makes sense. Cool. This is cool. Thanks, Hardik. Good no to see it. I know this is like months of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to see it live. Awesome. Um, I want to move it to some project demos. And before we do that, I know we also have Christian here from the community who's working on awesome projects. I want to give you some time to share what you're working on and put an ask out to have more folks come chat with you. Yeah, hi. Um, so my name is Christian. Uh, and right now I'm working on a research project to figure out how we may implement an incentive layer on surrounding network to better align developers uh, around the sharing of data models to, to make data even more composable. Um, and right now I'm in the process of, of speaking to speaking to different developers that's building on Ceramic and hearing about their experiences and their thoughts about building on Ceramic. Um, and also getting some inputs from different developers on how they may see uh, an incentive layer uh, in Ceramic. Um, so this, this is like an open call to anyone who's building on ceramic if they want to have like a quick chat with me it can be half an hour uh, an hour um but any kind of project any kind of project that you're doing on ceramic i would love to hear about your experiences just to gather data on on the different people's experiences um and in the end the intention is to come up with some informal and some formal suggestions to how that incentive layer can look like um, so I can I can drop some of my contact um, contact information in the chat, and then if you're a developer building on ceramic, then please reach out and we can have a chat about about your experiences. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Christian. And yeah, definitely encourage people to, especially if you're building um, your application, obviously on ceramic. 
uh, this future incentive model will have big implications for you. So we'd love to hear your voice and have you help us develop that. Um, let's turn to demos. Um, I know we have Stephen here from the Deep Skills team. Um, Want to turn to you. You guys have been building on ceramic for a while, um, and I know also built something really awesome for East Denver. So I want to give you the floor to demo. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, how much time do I have for the demo? Um, as much as you need. Like you know, maybe we do, we do have one other demo, so maybe like if you if you need a lot of time, like twenty minute cap. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I think five to seven minutes will be enough. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. My my name is Stefan. I just want to share what we've done uh, during East uh, Denver. I hope you can see my screen. Um, so just a little bit of background, what we are solving. Deep Skills is a, um, so we work with DAOs and we help DAOs to scale through recruitment. And uh, we're building, uh, we have more mature products, which is consulting and, and centralized tools for DAOs, like project management tools for DAOs. Uh, but also uh, what I personally work on is Deep Skills protocol, and it is a way to manage professional reputation in Web3 and actually probably, hopefully uh, beyond Web3 as well. And um, uh, the problem that we want to solve is that in traditional world, you kind of, when you need to prove your reputation, when you're looking for investor, mentor, or a job, you usually use self-reported data like CV or LinkedIn for that. And in Web3, uh, we have this uh, great advantage of, of, of verifiable uh, data on chain, off chain, uh, that proves a lot of uh, skills and capabilities and knowledge and uh, competency of people. And uh, with uh, um, Deep Skills Protocol, what we want to solve, I think the immediate problem that we see is that there's a lot of reputation and uh, kind of DAO tooling that already collects a lot of data about contribution. But all of that is is, is captured, and we want to aggregate it in, in, in a single protocol. and uh, basically, that's one of the, I think, uh, very important and powerful um, way to leverage composable data for uh, scaling of uh, decentralized autonomous organizations and helping people and organizations to establish trust between each other much faster. And uh, what we did during the hackathon uh, and what we continue working on is this uh, protocol that uh, combines data from a bunch of different data sources, um, such as source thread, coordinate, uh, quality, POAP protocol, some Web2 data like Discord or Twitter or GitHub, and Web3 kind of tooling, uh, which can be on-chain, off-chain, or, or NFTs, and uh, record the, all of that into the identity that uh, user owns and um, allow and enable other applications to leverage this data. So deep skills application is just one of them, but really because we're using ceramic, because we're using um, 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 DIDs and, and, and lead protocol for permission layer, uh, this is uh, open for anyone. And we already see a lot of interest by external applications to use this. Uh, and I want to just show how, how it looks. Um, yeah, uh, just... Um, yeah, signing into MetaMask, signing to the application, and this is called any app because this just representation of how protocol should should, should work. It's it's not like we are building the the, the user uh, interface, although we have one, but it is also uh, the, the the power this network of network effects come from. Uh, different applications reading and writing data uh, in, into the same identity uh, so data stream and, and 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 leveraging it to provide different services. So in this uh, specific case, I want uh, I already set up this account, so I already connected all of these uh, data sources uh, because it, it, it takes some time. Uh, but I basically I, I just press a button, so for pop coordinate source strategy just looks to my. Uh, Ethereum address and com compares it if, if it finds already uh, a uh, existing account in this system. Sorry, it, it already has APIs. And then GitHub Discord, this data, this data is just pulled through uh, API connections. So once this data is pulled, we created, we have a very basic version of schema manager. So we created schemas for all of these data types. They are recorded in the user 
uh, data stream on Ceramic, and we're also using lead protocol for permission layer. Again, because it was hackathon, it's very basic implementation. So uh, lead protocol only allows to kind of hide uh, encrypt data and or make it public, but really it's a very powerful tool. And I think a lot of things can be built in terms of like monetization business models where you can maybe uh, show your data to people owning certain tokens or being part of certain DAO. And then this is how the, 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 the profile looks like. And I think this is the important part where uh, we spent a lot of time basically doing this data interpretation because uh, first step is just pull data, put it into a specific data model or, and, and use uh, standardized schemas. But then how do you actually make sure that it, it is valuable? Uh, and, you, and how do you not overload the verifiers of this data? And what we did, we split all these data sources into four categories, skills. Uh, uh, so things that I know, for example, from GitHub, we pull languages I use, or from Coordinate, we pull, uh, we pull skills that you set up in your profile and co-ops. Uh, um, it's, it's, this is more like example, but uh, there's a lot of educational co-ops that can be. Uh, used here in projects. Uh, this data comes from poor coordinate, like real project that I completed that has start and end date and amount of gift tokens that I received and also people I worked with on this project. Uh, and then organizations, uh, this is just at my affiliation with certain organizations and, and reputation that I have here. So for example, cred score, in source cred or colony reputation are good examples of data that is already available. Uh, something that we don't need to really uh, create from scratch, but rather just aggregate and Discord servers. Uh, and also people um, uh, that I work with. And I think here uh, it also would be very valuable to leverage some of the existing uh, social graph protocols. Um, I know this Lens and this another one, I forgot the name, but, um, but, but, but uh, yeah, the overall idea is that um, um, combining the data, putting it in standardized way and giving uh, ability for any other application to use it for recruitment or personalization of experience uh, can uh, create this uh, standard um, behavior for Web3 for people to operate with um, professional identity and, and, and uh, professional reputation. The reputation part here is not very Obvious, but the next step for us is actually build scoring models on top. So you have individual credentials. These are just data pieces recorded uh, as, 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 uh, and signed by the issuers. But then once you have a lot of those, so here I have maybe 20 uh, different credentials. On top of that, we, can, uh, we want to create a marketplace for scoring models. And that's not like, since reputation is always subjective, we don't want to enforce uh, any single reputation uh, system or, or model, uh, but we want to create open marketplace where different people can do scoring for dif different uh, objectives, like scoring engineer and scoring community manager and scoring uh, learner uh, versus uh, uh, founder looking for inv investments. It, it, those uh, would be completely different uh, algorithms, but uh, you can use them depending on the um, depending on the need. And yeah, that's it. So uh, I also want to show just, uh, just to, to show that it's, it's actually, when we think about professional reputation, uh, right now, I feel like the biggest problem is not really creating that data. I think there's a lot of data that already exists. And, and, and this is just a list of all the tools that we identified and we want to build connectors. So we have five right now and we want to, Add more, so these are more Web3 native uh, uh, things, but also there's Web2 reputation systems where we can, or professional uh, platforms where we can pull data from. And um, we're doing everything in the open, uh, open source. Uh, we're inviting anyone to, who wants to collaborate. Uh, if uh, people with ceramic experience are obviously <laughs> very, very welcome. Uh, and uh, we're also working with a few uh, demo applications to, or not demo applications, working with a few application developers who wants to leverage this because just aggregating this data and giving it out to, uh, to applications who build next level of utility on top of user profiles, that's already quite valuable and we've received a lot of positive feedback uh, regarding that. 
Yeah, um, I think that's it. If, if, if anyone has any questions, I would love to answer. I was going to say, um, have you guys thought about submitting a data model to the data models registry for the credentials that you're publishing on ceramic? Uh, we will. Um, so this was hackathon project. A lot of thing, a lot of stuff is very scrappy. We're now building MVP out of it, and uh, data models and schemas will be reworked a little bit. So we will definitely definitely submit it. I I've seen that repo, and uh, we'll do it. Yeah, there's like a few projects that we were speaking to this morning, actually. Um, I know like both um, Gitcoin and the CollabLab team are thinking about doing something very similar. Um, and they're like starting to think through their data model. So it might make sense. And they've been thinking about trying to get together a working group around it. So maybe to like bring you guys all together. And I know there's also like Decompass that's also thinking about these credentials on ceramic. Um, so it might make sense to just pull that all to one place. Yeah, and by the way, so this is maybe one question to 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 this group. Uh, I think there's a, so I know there's a few groups that are working on on data modeling. It's either for specifically for ceramic use case or just credentialing in general or, or different SSI projects um, in 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 Web three. And I'm curious if if anyone is working on this universal um, um, schema registry or or model registry. Uh, Besides just the repository of the schemas, but also um, kind of curation system for, for, for those, because you can have multiple schemas that are more or less about the same, maybe like user profiles or, or GitHub data from GitHub or, or skills or badges. And uh, I think to get to, con to, con uh, to, to get convergence across uh, data models and schemas, uh, it would be great to uh, kind of make it public and see what schemas are different applications using and this way create more adoption. Uh, I think I think at least that that's would be very valuable for, for us. Yeah, I don't know if like Paul or Michael want to chime in here. I'm not sure if Michael's still here. Um, but that's definitely the like roadmap for us and that's part of what Christian's helping us with is right now all of that lives on this GitHub repo. Um, but eventually like, the idea is to have all that live directly on ceramic and to have these incentive models so people can start to curate and kind of like signal about different data models that they think are valuable. But Paul, I don't know if you want to chime in, chime in here. Um, yeah, no, not much to add uh, for now. It's more having the GitHub repository as a technical solution uh, for, for people to discover. Uh, but we don't have a curation model uh, associated to this registry. So over time, we hope to make this registry um, based on Ceramic itself and probably having some, uh, yeah, like community curation models and these kind of things. Uh, but it's not something that is uh, currently being worked on. So obviously, it would be great to see um, contributions from the community on, on these aspects as well. Um, I just posted in the chat if you want to see someone recently submitted a data model for verifiable credentials on ceramic um, and we're kind of going back and forth and working with him um, on some changes we'd love to see made but it's it's pretty good so far. Um, and then to your point I think like that's something we're thinking through internally is like some people obviously make these more kind of generic credentials like verifiable credentials on ceramic and then other projects we're seeing starting to converge around more use case specific credentials. Um, so we're kind of like seeing how that plays out and letting partners decide what makes sense for their use case for now. Um, but super cool. I would also check out um, something relevant for you is Combo Space. If you know them, they were doing decentralized comments on Ceramic and they just, yeah, um, yeah super cool. Yeah, we had we had we had a chat. So so yeah, so we 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 we're trying to slowly integrate and make connectors to all these, uh, especially uh, all the tools that are used in DAO context or professional context, where there's some valuable data and and just uh, yeah, slowly give ability for people to aggregate it around single identity, and then uh, this becomes more valuable as your profile becomes richer and richer, and there's more incentives for 
other applications to then reuse this identity and 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 and, and data associated with it because it's not just new profile it's it's already there's already some value behind it um so yeah yeah Conva are doing a great job and and yeah i'm really excited about how how this whole space is evolving awesome um well thanks so much for making time and for coming to present yeah, thanks super cool um and i know we also have steve here from the hash chat team um which is another east denver hack um Steve, I don't know if you're available on wanted demo really quick. Hey guys, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep. Good to see you, Lauren. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you, Rohan and Joel. I think I've talked to all you guys. Um, we are hash chat. We we uh, got together over the ETH Denver Hackathon and are putting together um, uh, something that I've wanted for the last two years, which is you guys have all been out there you've looked at different wallets you can see what's in a wallet and it's like i want to send a message to the person in the wallet and then you think well there's a thousand ways to do that why can't i do that but then you come to the realization that i want to have a business transaction with that wallet address i want to send a encrypted message to that wallet address and more importantly i want to know when i get a reply that is actually signed from that wallet address so that's what hash chat is doing just simple wallet to wallet encrypted messaging and i mentioned that i've been looking for this for a few years and i finally just threw up my hands and said let's do this at eth denver so put together a team at eth denver and i'll try and share my my uh i think a few just a few slides so don't uh, don't panic or anything um let's see yeah that's it that'll work Hopefully that'll work can you guys see that okay <clears throat> that better yeah so so some of the some of the pieces that were um some of the other reasons or use cases behind why you'd want to send a wallet is is if you want to send an invoice to someone and make sure it gets reconciled when we were at ETH Denver we were doing the DeFi um track and then I mentioned kind of communicating directly with with your token holders um, if any of you guys are from sort of the old school world where you've had to deal with lawyers and you've had to deal with like formal communications that are all like ancient and like, you know, like mailing things out and getting return receipts and certified mail and all that stuff, crypto just provides a fantastically simple or much easier, more robust way to do that. So all of these like these huge tech stacks can provide like a really simple thing. Um, and that's that's really what we're aiming to go after. And then, uh, you know, everybody's working on token gated communities. So that's one of the use cases. Um, but just briefly, oop, um, I mentioned this to the guys at ETH Denver, kind of everybody knows about messaging systems. Everybody knows about crypto. So how is HashChat different from everything else? Um, I've mentioned a bunch of these already. We want to stay completely decentralized. We want to leverage some of the ceramic uh, benefits of having a mutable message. Everyone talks about how wonderful it is to be immutable on blockchain, but in terms of having messaging, sometimes you want to actually be able to delete the messages. And, and yes, some of the um, members of the team really like the phrase hash chat as it has that essence of Snapchat behind it. Um, so that's that's the element of, of uh, you know, kind of deleting the messages after you after you've read them. Open source and then encryption and, and across chain, I heard and I was excited to hear the update on cacao by you guys. And I heard the key letters PKH. So I'm hopeful that that's going to slowly get in there and uh, and have the definition of being a cross chain. Anytime you have a messaging platform, you definitely want to have as many wallets as possible. We are ETH maxis. We love Ethereum. We love EVM compatible chains. But you know, being able to send a message to Bitcoin um, wallet holders from your Ethereum and being able to receive a certified message in response, uh, Ceramic enables all that stuff. So that's, that's why we're excited about working with with the ceramic team um, i don't have to tell you how it works i'm sure you guys all know how it works in terms of kind of the tech stack we're using the ceramic tools in the in the three id to get kind of a unique did when you connect your wallet um, and then in terms of kind of coordinating the messaging this is one sort of trick we, we had to brainstorm through in the uh, thing which is how do i know when i'm getting a message that it's actually coming to me and you know with the decentralized storage layer there's no real way to address anybody but posting one transaction to initiate a conversation on something like a gnosis chain for a very small gas fee allows me to open a conversation with someone and then have a reference to a did posted in that transaction layer so yes it does cost a small gas fee amount but we see that as actually an economic disincentive to spammers so 
for all of you guys that have maybe a few hundred people in your contacts to initiate a conversation, it would be, you know, less than 10 cents to kind of in, in gas fees to start that. But if you're a spammer and you want to send 20 million emails or 20 million messages to new people every day, it would just, the cost would start to add up. So, um, so yeah, and then, and then I mentioned the kind of certification of receiving the response back from the wallet and knowing that it's actually from the person that controls that wallet and controls those assets that you can then clearly see on blockchain. That's the, that's the sort of core feature there. So um, I think that is all I had. Super quick, super simple. Um, as, they, as a lot of people say, easy is hard. We want to make this super easy to use. But of course, that means a lot of the back end work and the team at Ceramic is, is fantastic. And I love the, the kind of tech stack and hearing about kind of the features that you're adding on top of it. So let me just pause there and see if there's any questions or, or can you still see my screen? I, I have a quick question about this. Um, I've seen sort of encrypted messaging apps being built at hackathons for a while. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, like, what what exactly what advantage does it have to use ceramic instead of IPFS for this? Um, well, I guess the 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 tech stack and the availability of um, uh, I, I guess I I'm not that deep into the IPFS, so they may be working on some PKH activity as well. Um, but the the um, uh, I mean, <laughs> It's really the, the the team that's working on I, uh, on ceramic that that I'm familiar with, and we also have some members of our team that have already developed stuff on ceramic. So that's really kind of the the leading edge um, piece of it. And I guess just to, it would be helpful to understand a little bit how ceramic fits into the architecture here. Like, is is each message its own stream, or is each conversation a stream, or each half of yeah. a conversation a stream? Like, kind of how does it work? Each, each conversation, each time you initiate a conversation from one to one person, that's a new stream. Um, and then if we, we think about, you know, in every single stream of conversations that you have on any chat application, there's always somebody else you want to pull into the conversation after you've begun the thread. So being able to join streams together um, is, is a feature that I know Ceramic has that we're looking at integrating. And, and by the way, just so you guys know, we started this at ETH Denver, so it's, it's only about two weeks old. Um, <laughs> and we're actually in the middle of the ETH Global Hackathon right now, kind of kind of starting over again. We learned a ton at the ETH Denver thing, and we said, you know what, let's just start over again at the ETH Global Hackathon, and we've got a full week instead of 24 hours to build something out. So um, well, I, that, that's part, partly answer your question. There's a bunch more stuff that uh, I'd have to get my, my um, ceramic guy on to, to answer your question about the specifics that we're using for ceramic. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a super cool idea, and I like the 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 model around you know a, a gas cost to start the conversation but then it's free to continue it i think that makes a lot of sense i'm curious like when if someone i'm just curious to understand the tech stack more like if someone you know when you, when when you open a, a conversation with someone new how does the recipient get like discover that someone has opened a conversation with them like yeah, how no. do you Push notification is really hard. And right now we're, we're looking at simply, uh, you have to connect to the app with your wallet. And once you connect to the app with your wallet, you'll be able to search through and find you know any messages that have come to you. Sure, um, but how do you even it, identify that in the first place? How do you how do, you do the search? Um, yeah, once, yeah. You, once you've connected your app, how do you identify conversations that are addressed to you? All of the, um, the two addresses are the index of, of what we're searching for. So that will be available in, in the entire, um, in the entire database or in the entire ceramic um, setup. We haven't built it yet. So so I'm just saying the plans that we have. Maybe you have some ideas for us. Well, it just depends on how, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. I mean, I imagine you said that the part of the, the, the how you open yeah, a conversation so is with a transaction on chain. Right. Uh, so, so, yeah. so I assume that that was the conversation establishment that established, but then you need just like that transaction include like the to and the from, and then do you have an indexing system like the graph or something that you're using to, to find? Yeah, the, the, the transaction includes the to and the from, um, but the from is encrypted. Um, the to is, is, is uh, well, no, actually the from and to is, is in, in the transaction because it's a transaction on, on chain. And inside that transaction is the stream ID. Um, that you would then access. And then you can go back to that stream ID for future conversations. So the app would open up and look through all of your transactions to see if you have any new messages or refresh any of the old streams with, with any new messages that are on there. Does that make sense? 
I think so. I, just, I assume that there must be some sort of indexing system in here somehow that's indexing the blockchain to font to identify these transactions. That establish yeah, competitions. We're, we're, we're right now, um, some of our developers are pushing hard for the graph to be that indexing engine, but I, I'm, I'm trying to stick hard to the decentralized aspect of it, but it's kind of hard, especially for a hackathon, right? We're, we're cutting corners here, so. so. Well, the graph has a fully decentralized implementation that you can use. Okay. All right, you've convinced me, Spencer. <laughs> I'm just trying, you know, I'm <laughs> just how I, how I imagine it, it, it must work. Something at some point you need a way to, to know, like if yep. you knew the pair of the ID, like the pair of users, it's easy to find like, okay, all the conversations between user A and user B, like that's fairly easy to identify. But if like, if you're a user, if I'm user A and I want to, and I don't know who might be trying to reach me, I'm like, I just want to know some user tried to reach me answering that question in a decentralized way, like, is tricky without some sort of indexing service. Well, so so I mean, if you think about that problem, that specific problem is just simply looking at your transactions on, on the Gnosis chain to see if there've been any new initial conversations or to look at the old transactions and to refresh those stream IDs to see if there's any new messages being appended to those stream IDs. But there's actually, so the, the, the conversation establishment is actually a transfer, is a transaction between, the, from, the recip, from the initiator yeah. to the recipient. So yeah. there's actually yeah. like a, a real, so you're actually kind of paying the person you want to talk to a, little, a tiny amount of money to say, please stop. Well, me. you're not paying them; you're paying the gas fees, and that's the whole point of the economic model that it puts some puts some uh, stuff in 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 the way, right? So, cool. There's, there's a small to do a transaction to an empty wallet to an unknown person to start a conversation. I have to pay some gas fee. I'm not going to pay them anything, right? You basically um, do, can you do like a zero a zero dollar yeah or zero token transfer between two wallets? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> cool interesting thanks spencer thanks lauren it might be uh sorry last thing it might be interesting um to look at have you heard of mail chain mail chain no there's a bunch of them there's like xmtp there's a whole bunch of them and and frankly, that's the reason why I never bothered to do this over the past two years. I thought somebody's going to solve this. Somebody's certainly going to solve this. And then new messaging systems come out, but they don't solve the problem that I keep running into. And I thought I might as well do it. But no, tell me about uh, what was the one you said? Um, <clears throat> so MailChain's kind of been doing this for about three years now, but I don't know how active that project is anymore. Um, but I figure like everyone I've seen trying to do this, the problem ends up being um, if you send me a message, I will never know that you sent me a message until and unless I open your app. Um, right. And that discovery is a huge piece, is a huge problem because like, how am I gonna hear about your app, right? Um, so I know there were some efforts a couple of years ago um, when MetaMask announced Snaps, um, yep. the plugins for MetaMask, some like, I actually, like I did a hackathon a couple of years ago where we tried to do a very hacky implementation of a messaging interface inside of MetaMask. Um, but I mean, it kind of falls into the same problem that the user somehow needs to discover your plugin and install it. Um, but that's that's pretty much, like that's probably the biggest problem I see with messaging solutions like this. But I like yep. the approach, but I think most of the work here needs to be around discovery, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, you're, I think that's a great point. And, and that's actually, you know, one of the one of the things they say about any of these projects is that timing is really important. And a lot of people don't get into that. Right. But but I see kind of the past several years of people being more and more comfortable with connecting their wallet to various apps and checking on various things and being more and more facile with private keys and public keys. And I'm like, now there's a large community of people that have this encryption capability that's native and they're dealing with large assets or, you know, even 10, 20 bucks, right, is enough to care about it. Surely we can use that same infrastructure and just send simple messages that have been encrypted and been, cert, you know, been digitally signed by people, right? Like, like that's the next level. And then, of course, signing legal documents comes after that and signing contracts comes after that. And, you know, there's there's all kinds of stuff to layer onto it. I don't know if Hashchat's going to do that, but I'm, I'm just I'm just a lover of this whole community and I want I wanted to create a tool that'll click, get us to the next level here, right? Sending formal communications to various asset holders is, is kind of a neat, uh, a neat niche that we're, we're diving into here, so. Okay, yeah, that, that's fair. Um, I was just gonna say like, if you're trying to make this a generalized messaging platform, the best way to get out there is probably 
try to work on open standards and get it integrated into wallets because wallets have the best audience for messaging built into them um yeah yep yeah there's there's a it's it's funny how uh uh we are deep into the tech stack um but there's a lot to be said for marketing and economics and business strategy and stuff that we we um uh, i think we tend to overlook in in uh, in ethereum in the ethereum world so hopefully to bring bring some of that in here anyways well thank you so much steve um that was awesome I know we have a couple minutes left, but um, maybe Elizabeth, I was wondering if you want to just chat through, um, for some people may have noticed we've been making a lot of changes in our Discord and just thinking about the right ways to structure it, and you've been behind a lot of that, so maybe you want to share some of the work you've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a bunch of things that are changing in this framework Discord, and we're trying to make it as painless as we possibly can, but there's always going to be a few pain points going on. Uh, one of the biggest things we're working on is a way to actually track and monitor the questions that the community is asking, because a lot of them are regular questions, and the less times we have to re-answer a question, the happier we're going to be and the more we're going to be able to work on the actual core protocol. So you might notice every here and there an emoji reaction on some questions you're asking, and you might also have noticed that we're really kind of not answering questions or avoiding answering questions outside of dev support in a threaded message. This is so that we can keep it organized and keep it all, all functioning great. And we do have a couple of other smaller things going on in the back background, like we're working on collapsing down some channels and folding them together to minimize the noise and actually drive more conversations about how to use Ceramic and the different types of projects to use it with, rather than focusing on the server being more of a question answer sort of system. So that is the biggest thing that we want to encourage is we want to encourage everyone in our community to actually talk about the things they're building and to just ask for help and other thoughts from the community. And so to that end, just to reiterate, please use a thread in the uh, Ceramic Discord dev support channel to get any questions answered. Otherwise, I really, really just try and communicate with each other and get everything everyone going on the same page. Let's, we're working on decentralizing data and making it de-siloed. Let's also try and do that with the community and get that shared brain going. Um, I think that's the really quick and dirty. I don't want to take up too much time with it, but if there's anything that happens, we're, we're working on it, I promise. We're going through every step we can. And yeah, I hope to see a lot more engagement there and a lot more talk about how to use it rather than just the my, 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 my configuration might have broken. Awesome, thank you. Um, we have six minutes left, open floor. Any other questions, comments, things to share? Cool. Uh, actually, yeah. Um, I think Matt, jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we'll have some bounties for another hackathon pretty soon. The uh, the Lens Protocol team is hosting a hackathon with ETH Global that I think we will be late entries into. I think there'll be some news coming out today, um, so look for more on that pretty soon if you want more hackathon excitement. Yeah, and that is uh, slated to start around March 18th, so keep an eye out like soon. One other thing that I guess we wanted to mention briefly on this call, um, the, the ceramic dev team and 3Box Labs are thinking about a few different directions for our, our gateway service that we currently provide. Um, right now, if there's like a public ceramic node, gateway.ceramic.network, which is a read-only view over all the data on the network that is operated by 3Box Labs. We're considering some changes to it. Um, that are still kind of up for, that we're still exploring, but we'd love to hear from anyone who is currently using the gateway. So if you use the gateway read-only service to access data on the ceramic network, we'd love to hear about it. So we could talk to you about how, how you use it and what your requirements are. Um, so uh, I don't know, Lauren, what would be the best way for people to get in, in, in touch with us if they are using the gateway? Is it just uh, tag one of us on Discord? Um, sure, you can tag us on Discord, DM, um, shoot us an email. I can put my, my email in the chat just so people have it. Cool. So if that's something you, you use and rely on um, to support your application in any way, um, please let us know because uh, we'd love to talk to you about it.
Um, I also see Christian, you asked about the ceramic grant program. Danny, do you want to just speak to that quickly? Uh, yes. Um, uh, we have like a framework for it. It's super light. We need to now put it into place so that we can start to actually um, recognize people who are contributing to things. That probably needs a little bit more time, mostly because we need someone who can actually like pay proper attention to it to get it over the line because um, we are all crazy busy. Um, Christian, I know we, we talked about this specifically for um, for the, the Python implementation, I think. Um, so like ask us again in like five days, like early next week, and we might have a clear timeline for one-off things and then for a more systematic thing. Um, but it's not imminently going to roll out in a systematic way in the next like week or so. It's just a few too many pieces to to get done. Cool, makes sense. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot going on right now. I can shoot out in the next week. Cool. Um, I want to mention one last thing. So this Saturday, uh, March twelfth, tentatively, um, Ceramic is going to co-host a Twitter Space. Um, we'll probably have more information on Twitter soon, but. Uh, uh, on Saturday around 11 a.m., we probably host a Twitter space talking about just general Web3 stuff and general ceramic stuff in Web3 and why ceramic is important. Um, EST, Eastern. So we hope to see you there if you guys can make it. Um, yeah, there will be myself, Lauren, um, Joel, and anybody else who can make it. And Hardik, it's on which account again? We're doing it with it's the a group that you're very involved with, right? Yes, it's going to be like across uh, co hosted with like uh, Ceramic and Learn Web3, which is like a free sort of Web3 developer education platform. Um, so we're going to be co hosting there. And yeah, I think it's going to be pretty lit. Awesome. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think we are just at time. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. We will see you next month. We'll post this on our blog and then YouTube. Um, any follow ups, just uh, catch us in the Discord. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks all.